So, so bunny. Yes. Let Let's keep the the happiness train a moving here. <laughs> last on. week, last week on the Pope on Film podcast, we performed a much needed public service by readying all our listeners to the annoying shitstorm that will no doubt flood our entire lives once filmmaker Roger Corman dies. Yes. And then, at the end of the rant, I said that basically you can also get this entire rant and replace Roger Corman with uh, living Marvel Comics meme Stan the Man Lee. Yes. I am calling him Stan the Man Lee because my kids, Bella and Maxwell, are obsessed with the open-ended video game Lego Avengers. Yes. And it's basically just you have all of New York to kind of wander around. You also have some other levels like space, uh, the shield, helicarrier, some yeah. other, what is it, Asgard. Uh-huh. So a lot of, you get these random tasks that you're supposed to accomplish after you've done the plot. And a lot of the tasks center around Stan Lee's in trouble. You've got to save Stan Lee. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so the kids are always saving Stan Lee. But I swear to God, the both of them, they just call him Stan Lee now. Stanley. <laughs> oh, we got to say Stanley. Oh, Stanley's hiding. Oh, where is Stanley? And it just gets on my freaking nerves. His <laughs> name isn't Stanley. It's Stan I know Lee. Stan Lee. I did like calling him Stanley for short. Leave me alone. So that's why I'm using his old Marvel bullpen nickname, <laughs> Stan the Manly, because yeah. I'm direct. I'm erecting a wall. I'm building a wall <laughs> between <laughs> Stan and Lee. I'm erecting a buffer. Uh-huh. Stanley. So that the kids won't fuck up his name. Stan the Manly, because he's man. the man. Stan man the Manly. Man Lee. Man Lee. And they anyway, got, and they got to respect Stan the man Lee. Yeah, Stan the man Lee, the de facto creator of Marvel Comics, and also the creator of a decent percentage of your favorite comic book characters. The man is ninety-five years old, and he is embroiled in controversy right now. What? Yeah, I, I caught a little bit about it. It sounded like he had. A health issue that had kind of gone away, it's, and they're, the they're grouch showing him is what they're fucking doing. The, the whole, day that dies is the day that dies. yeah, the whole thing is really uh, complicated. So let me try and walk through this. So okay, um, he's ninety-five years old now. That in and of itself, yeah, is a lot. Not only that, but apparently in two thousand and twelve, he got a pacemaker implanted. Uh huh. And then in 2017, his wife of almost 70 years died. Yes. And that has just got to just kill you inside, you know, almost they were they were together for almost 70 years. They, they have you got ever, married. When, have you ever seen any footage with her in it? I read his biography. Yeah. Which was in comic book form. It it came out like a few years ago, and it was a comic book biography, and I thought that it was wonderful. I also thought, well, this is Stan Lee writing his life story, so I can only believe about 60% of it. Yeah. But she was in that. She was in that all over the place. So I've seen but, her in comic book form. Yeah, but it, no, I saw I I saw them both in an interview in something, and I forget what the fuck it was. And she is like a raving bitch, just a raving bitch. And the whole time, Stanley is just walking around, fucking laughing, just laughing. Yeah, I've heard like things he was like, like he was literally just thoroughly entertained at the raving bitch she was and i was like god damn i don't i don't see how this this is working but it seems to be working (laughs) yeah one of the one of the things i read said that that the wife was the major person in charge of saying yes and no and 
and and the legal aspect of everything and, and she was in control of Stanley's estate and 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 doing things and the reason why she was in charge is because she was outspoken and opinionated and Stan Lee had a habit of just saying yes to whoever was in front of him Donald Trump style yeah so oh and also he 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 also now has a uh, macular degeneration I'm not even sure what that is so he's not so he's not in good shape well, well that's now really, that, that's, that's, that's as far as I know, macular degeneration is like the old person's disease. When yeah, you start getting but, old at like twenty. Yeah. So kind so of like how uh, kind of like how Andre the Giant died of big. Yes, yes. Yeah. So now there's this odd tale of what may or may not be elder abuse happening with Stan the Man Lee. Oh, so the, the okay. The first sign of trouble was suddenly Stan the Man Lee was not in any fucking conventions, and that never happens. He is always at every convention, you know? So so people started looking into this, and according to a lengthy article in The Hollywood Reporter and a number of follow-up articles, one day Stan Lee arrives at his lawyer's office, his longtime lawyer, and he, he's there and he's like, uh, hey, longtime lawyer of mine, I need you to write up a declaration. Okay. And, okay. and again, FYI, and aside here, the details of this are complicated and confusing and some third C word. So I, this may not get all of the ridiculously multifaceted details. This but is this the is sounding, of it. The more you talk about it, the more it sounds like I was right at the beginning. They're fucking Groucho Marxing him because this is exactly yeah. how yeah. you know Ma- Groucho Marx died at a, at a pretty late age for the time. He was in his upper 80s I, or maybe broke 90. You know, had a lot of money, and there was this huge fight all around the time he died because he died because he was fucking old. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult because the plot of this is basically like Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. There's just these bajillion different things. So this is the gist of it. It isn't all of it. This is the gist of it. Okay. Now, now that was an aside. Now here's an aside within an aside. Uh-oh. Be sure and check out the gist HBO's ten part miniseries about <laughs> life in Brooklyn in 1959. <laughs> I just came up with. I I would watch the shit out of HBO's The Gist. The soundtrack would be so good. HBO, give me a call. <laughs> so. So Stan Lee's blistering declaration, that's what that's Hollywood Reporter's description, the blistering declaration claimed that long ago him and his wife set up a trust fund for their now 60-year-old daughter who just has a habit of fucking blowing through money MC Hammer style. Yeah. So they set up a trust fund for her, but apparently she is constantly asking for more money and for various properties that Stan Lee owns be transferred into her name so she can have even more money. Mm -hmm. Then this declaration states that the reason why she keeps doing this and she keeps trying to take all of Stan Lee's money is because there are three old, older men, including one shifty lawyer, who have been using Stan Lee's daughter to slowly pick away at Stan Lee's estate and Mm -hmm. gain that gain his estate for themselves uh, apparently stan lee's uh, estate is estimated to be worth somewhere between 50 and 70 million dollars so this is a large amount of money yeah. that various warring factors are fighting for so stan lee writes this blistering declaration has the lawyer write it up has it notified and then about two or three days later stan lee says oops never mind uh, that entire declaration is false. It can be destroyed. It's good. We're all good here. Oh, and hey, longtime lawyer, friend of mine, you're fired. Okay. So, yeah. so this looks like, yeah, some, some seriously shady elder abuse type shit. Uh, in fact, the shit that's going down seems to many to be a more public version of what may or may not have led to the release of Harper Lee's second book. Groucho Marx style. You remember that that whole story? That was sad. Groucho, what? 
No, Harper Lee. She wrote To Kill a Mockingbird, and it's considered the best book ever. And everyone's like, oh, my goodness, this is the work of pure genius. It's the greatest book that will ever be written. So, Harper Lee, will you ever write again? And she said, no, I had one book in me, and that's my one book. And let me tell you, as long as I am living, you'll never see another book written by Harper Lee. Then suddenly she's like 91 years old, and suddenly she has a new book. Everybody should buy it. Everybody should buy this new book by this now 91-year-old. Oh, guess what? It was a it was a hidden book that we've recently uncovered, and Harper Lee is to who's 91 years old now is totally okay with it being released. The Onion called the article called their new book like. Harper Lee's new book, My Beloved Caretaker, should have all of my money after my death. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's basically it. The yeah. Onion, once again, got it on the nose, because that's why Harper Lee suddenly released a second book in 2015. Yeah. And that's why, and basically that's what's happening right now. There's a fight with Stan Lee. So now there's this nasty and very public fight over Stan Lee's estate. Now one of the three men that was listed in the declaration has in 100% control over Stan Lee. And so so the other people who were who were fighting together through Stan Lee's daughter to get control of Stan Lee are like, "Hey, you're you have control over him. This is elder abuse. You should stop it." So now this one of the three men, the one who has control over Stan Lee now, is having Stan Lee record videos disavowing the declaration. Like, like a Kevin like Smith a, must have weighed in on this here somewhere. Like a hostage, basically. Stan Lee is a hostage now. Like literally, this is some Game of Thrones shit. <laughs> really. I assume. I haven't seen it. I assume it's just Shakespeare, but with gore and tits. But whatever. Okay, uh, do not touch this, Eleanor. I see you going up to Mommy's computer. Mommy left for a second. Do not touch. You terrorist. You freaking terrorist. <laughs> do not touch Mommy's computer, okay, is what I'm saying. Do not touch. I know. So, so, all of this is happening, this bizarre fight over Stan Lee, because why? Because the wife died first is why. Yeah. She was the wrong. So without her, it's all a big fat shit show. In fact, the April 10th Hollywood Reporter article even has a chart going over the characters in this convoluted drama. I recommend reading the article. Uh, just Bing, Stan Lee, Hollywood Reporter, and it's the main thing that comes out. It's a lengthy article that yeah. details all of the three men, details Stan Lee's daughter, uh, Stanley's daughter's history with Stanley and with the and the wife and the history of uh, how Stanley came upon this money and it, it's a it's a really great article but FYI it is a bummer yeah what is happening right now with Stanley and so as sad as it may be we really should all start preparing now mm -hmm. yes Stanley's eventual decline in fact there's a part of me that's worried that he's gonna He's going to Charles Schultz it. Yeah, you think? Yeah, like like uh, Charles Schultz okay, okay. made Peanuts, okay. like this long-running comic strip, and then he said, I'm finishing Peanuts, and then he died the day before yeah. the last strip came out. There's a part of me then that's now doubly worried about the new Avengers movie. Yeah. No, you know, because not only are our are, are beloved characters going to die and heroes going to be destroyed and the Marvel Cinematic Universe as we know it is going to be fundamentally altered and changed and heroes are going to go away and retire and the entire universe is going to be different. But now Stan Lee's on his last leg. Yeah. So just FYI, prepare yourselves. And with somebody like Stan Lee, it would be kind of quick. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. So, yeah, there's uh, sad stuff going down there. So just prepare yourself. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to die. So, yeah, no, this has already been a really fun, lighthearted episode of the Pope on Film. So, yay and, for and, that. And maybe push Roger Corman down a flight of stairs. I'm just saying, you know, Possibly. but it would be is, poetic is, if they 
both go out the same day. He is my like, nemesis. Like ripping the Band-Aid off, you know? Yeah. Yeah. My nemesis. My nemesis. Yeah. Is, my nemesis. He's my nemesis. We are nemesis. He's my nemesis. Yeah. Yeah. 